do the sex. <laughs> Today's Locker Room Talk and Shots topic is smells like sexual confidence, pheromones, and the art of seduction. So we are in the heart of the season of love. We have got cuffing season overlapping with Valentine's Day. It is cold outside and most of us are either looking for someone to hook up with and stay warm with or to maybe heat up our current love life with some extra O's. And as it turns out, for those of us who may be struggling a little bit more, I'm not saying that I am, but if I were, there is a hack out there. I like to think of it as a hack or maybe a helping hand up in the dating and sexual confidence world. It is hot on TikTok and I would say it's an emerging or re-emerging uh, topic out there in the love, sex, romance world. It's all about pheromones and how you can use pheromones in your own love life, whether you're looking to date or to heat things up. And as it turns out, my guest today is perfect to address this topic. My guest is Jackie Rubinoff. She is a love coach and relationship expert, but that's not all. She is also an entrepreneur and the co-owner and vice president of Eye of Love, a distinguished company specializing in high-end pheromone-powered sensual products. Jackie is at the forefront of creating innovative solutions to enhancing people's love lives, and she leverages her expertise to offer invaluable advice and guidance to singles and couples alike. Welcome, Jackie. And I am going to hand the mic over to you just to tell my listeners a little bit more about you. Thank you so much for that intro. I feel like I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited to be here today. And I make different products designed to enhance your love life. So that's my main goal is just to help people have better relationships, better friendships, better, you know, love lives, um, whether they're working or playing or being intimate. Um, my goal is just to help give you that extra added edge in your daily life. Um, so that's what we do with our products, which I'm sure we'll get into mm -hmm. later on. Yeah. So uh, I have been using the pheromone products that Jackie uh, Jackie and her company have created now for uh, a couple of weeks, maybe almost a month now. So I'm really excited to talk to you about them. And I think what's special about this podcast is that not only are you an expert in sort of the world of pheromone use – that is coupled with you already being a love and relationship coach. So there's just a lot of knowledge there for my listeners who are are really looking at putting energy in two twenty what in twenty twenty four into their relationships. Which you know, right now we all have our resolutions, and hopefully, especially for the my listener base, I am hoping some of your re resolutions were around um, love and sex and romance and having. A better intimate life. So I am ready to get this conversation going. I'm having coffee over here and Jackie is a little bit saucier over there with her. <laughs> she's, got, she's a little boozy, which I wish I was, but I woke up late today. <laughs> Refreshment. <laughs> so I'm ready. Let's cheers. Let's talk about pheromones, sex and love. So first first and foremost, can you tell my listeners what pheromones are? Let's just start okay. with the basics. Yes, let's, let's start with the basics. So everybody has pheromones. We all have pheromones in our body. And it's what we give off. And it's what is, makes people attracted to you and drawn to you and feel closer to you not only in a sexual way, but also just in a friendly way, like I was mentioning earlier. Um, when you breathe in pheromones, it goes through your nasal, nasal passage to the hypothalamus, and it triggers a response of arousal and attraction. So if there is an attraction, it will just kind of break down those walls and allow you to take that relationship further. But if there's no attraction at all, you're not immediately just going to be sexually attracted to someone, but you will feel closer to them 
um, in a social way, in a friendly way. Um, so a lot of our customers will tell us that, you know, it helped them with their sales. It helped them make more tips. It helped them if they're a valet parker, if they're a bartender, if they are, you know, real estate agents, we sell a lot too. Um, we say it just gives you that little extra edge in your daily life. You focused on sort of the effect on other people, but how, because I noticed, first of all, I want to say the minute I opened uh, your products and you sent me three different uh, clones or perfumes, right? Pheromone based perfumes. I was instantly, and I was, I was actually here with my 21 year old daughter. We opened them and instantly, you know, for, for sure. And I'm very, I'm very sensitive to scents, meaning, meaning that they have a strong effect on me. I mean, if there is someone who I'm not fond of and they smell really good, sometimes my my erogenous zones will light up and I'm like, what are you doing? So I, I have a strong uh, natural reaction to scent. But one question I have is how do they just affect, let's say if no one's in the room and you are exposed to pheromones, what is that effect? So pheromones can help you feel more confident. They can make you feel more outgoing. They can make you feel more social. Like I know that when I put on my pheromones in the morning, like I immediately feel more sexy, more confident. Um, I wear it, you know, if I'm at a trade show and it helps me, you know, feel confident making those interactions. So it's not just for the wearer. I mean, it's not just for other people. It's also for yourself to give you that extra boost. Um, and you mentioned the fragrances as well. So our pheromones actually work on two different levels, our products. So you have the pheromones in there, which stimulate that chemical reaction that we spoke about earlier. Um, and then you also have a fragrance in there as well. And each of our fragrances are, you know, made from different things like vanilla and jasmine and grapefruit, creamy white chocolate. Um, also attracting ingredients as well. Um, so that also gives you that little extra boost and also makes you feel sexy and confident and, and good as well. Yeah, and I, I, I just want to say, like, I love the scents, and I had certain scents that I, I was drawn to more. And we'll get into those. And then, of course, listeners, I, I will have an article to go along with this where you can see all of the different products. But um, I am curious when it comes to dating and attracting people first of all how can people use and know which pheromone to get and use this in their love life uh, in dating also within just their current love life what is the role that using pheromones can play um, so going back to the question of like, how do they know which pheromone to get? So we use two different pheromones in our products. So, um, by the way, all of our pheromones are vegan, they're cruelty free and derived from the wild yam root. Um, so we don't use any animal byproducts or anything like that. Um, but we use two different pheromones. We have estratetranol, which is used to attract him. And then we have androsinol, which is used to attract her. Um, so based on who you're looking to attract, you'll want to choose the product that's right for you. And, and so that leads me to the question, I like I'm a bisexual woman. And when I go out into the larger world, I'm I personally I'm by bi, bisexual, I want to attract everyone, basically, I'm looking for everyone. And whoever arrives is a lucky person, right? So what would you say to someone who isn't, you know, or, or is interested in non binary people? Or what, what? How does that work? So we actually have an attract them product and I have it here on the table with all my products. Mm -hmm. um, so this is our matchmaker attract them. So this is for people who are gender fluid, non binary. Um, this is the product for you. So this actually has both pheromones inside. And so friends, just so you know, you can go to my YouTube channel, Annette Benedetti, there you can see anything we're holding up. She, she was holding up her uh, perfume, the Eye of Love perfume, I would call it perfume, a pheromone based perfume called Matchmaker. I do have that one. 
I, I love the way it smells, and I actually did wear it over the past week. And I'm just saying, I I got some attention. Did <laughs> I need it here? I know. I my favorite part about this business is the stories that I get every day from I, our customers. That's my favorite part. So. I do want to say I was sort of in a situation uh, with a group of different people, and it was interesting. There were it, there were, and it was a wide variety. Um, and sort of for the first time, I've been sharing with my listeners uh, over the last I don't know I don't even know how many m- months it is I've gone through what, what has been a very challenging breakup and. Uh, just in that a lot of sadness and it really turned off my libido and just my you know that extra sexy something that I I I tend to have a lot of obviously topic of uh, discussion on this podcast Um, and I've been fine with that but I have been wearing um, your different products just to kind of play with how it makes me feel. But I wore this one specifically because I knew I was going to be in a group and I was like, hey, I'd like to get a little sexy back. I'd like to start feeling more confident and, you know, put myself out there a little bit. And and I'm going to be honest with you. It was sort of I did experience sort of this electric connection with someone not um, not in that I'm ready to like launch into any huge like relationship or anything like that. But it was it was sort of the first time in a long time where uh, I met someone who I didn't know. I hadn't you know, it was a brand new human. Um, And and honestly, it kind of happened with more than one person. And that was interesting to me. Like I had zingers going off left and right is what I'm trying to say. And I felt super confident. And I didn't experience any anxiety during my interactions with people um, or after. <laughs> so You're experiencing the pheromone advantage. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah. You described like exactly what we that's exactly what our product does. It just gives you that little extra oomph and little extra edge. Um, I know a lot of other pheromone brands, they'll market that, you know, mm-hmm. you're going to spray it and everyone's going to come running like the Axe commercial. And that's not how it works. We wish it did because that would be great for us. Mm-hmm. Um, but it doesn't work like that. And we don't market that it does do that because um, it doesn't. But it does make, you know, it gives you that electric feeling. It makes, you know, makes you feel confident, makes you feel good. That was a distinct feeling that I haven't had in a very long time that especially out in, you know, groups of people where I know, you know, everyone's dressed up. It was, you know, kind of a little a small party situation. Uh, But I think even more, A, the electricity was nice because it told me like, I'm still, I still got it. I still got it, folks. (laughs) <laughs> She's coming back around. Um, back, back. <laughs> but I think the other thing that really stood out to me that sometimes I don't think people realize, especially in the dating and um, sexual confidence world, is that underlying self-questioning that can pop up when we're trying to attract people. Or even though I, you may not want to attract people. You just want to feel like a presence that draws people in so that when you're at the point where you want to attract someone, like you're sitting in a a place of advantage rather than anxious. Do they notice me? How do they feel about me? And what I noticed while wearing this is I don't get into the, I, I don't have anxiousness around it at all. Like, I don't have a lot of self-questioning. I feel this level of, like, calm inside and just confidence in where I'm at and who I am. And, you know, A, I hope some of that is just me doing my own self-work. But I I am, again, very strongly affected by scent. And uh, I have also been using – there's another product that you created that's called Confidence. So mm-hmm. – I actually have that here. Too. And it is, it's my favorite oh, scent. Sorry. And I actually put it on at night before I go to bed so that I am like, I sleep in that scent. And so part of me, like, and it feels like I have had this more, this, I call it calmness. 
maybe other people experience confidence differently than I do. I tend to be a very confident person, but my confidence is undermined by anxiety. And that anxiety within me has dissipated largely. So I'm, I'm certainly fascinated with the use of pheromones. Um, and I have noticed a marked difference since I've been using it. I'm sleeping in it, so I would hope so. I've never, I've never heard, that's the first time I've heard about like using the pheromones for calmness to go to sleep. Like it makes sense. It makes mm-hmm. total sense. I just, because people are always using our products when they're going out, when they're seeing people, but like, you're right. It makes sense to go to sleep. I think I'm going to try it tonight with my two toddlers that are like driving me crazy. They'll go to sleep. I'll spray myself with pheromones and then hopefully pass out. <laughs> yeah. And the nice thing is it kind of gets into my blankets too. So I can go and take a nap and I, you know, anyways, that's how I've been yeah. using it. I feel like I noticed, uh, well, I know that I, I did well in a group setting. So in attracting people, you know, there is the myth. I want to kind of talk about the myths that you you addressed a little bit where you've got products out there and they're like, you spray them on and people come running to you. What That isn't the case, right? It That's the myth. That's the myth. I mean, we, we wish that was the case, but we also never make any guarantees because there's so many other factors that go into it. You know, we could give you the best pheromones in the world, but if you have, you know, a rude personality or you're, you know, you're not being nice or, you know, there's so many other factors that can go into it. Um, So we never, like I said, we never make any claims or things like that. Um, Yeah, a lot of other brands will use techniques like that, that they'll say, you know, you'll spray it, everyone's going to come running, but it's, it's really not like that. So the other thing you mentioned is that you take the pheromones from yams. Now, I don't know anything about the science of where I was under the stand understanding that some people use animal based Mm-hmm. pheromones in their product. Can you talk a little bit about the difference between human pheromones, animal pheromones, the the kind you are using? Because I could see people w- wondering, like, how does taking pheromones from something else relate yeah. to human to human interaction? Yeah. So our pheromones, like I said, they're synthesized from the wild yam root. That's where they get a lot of other hormones like when they make like the synthetic like estrogen and progesterone they get it from this root as well so we've been able to recreate pheromones human pheromones like that um but as far as other brands i know a lot of other brands will use like pig's urine or different things like that and i can't speak on those because obviously i don't i don't believe in that um but I lost my train of thought, but I forgot what the question was. Yeah, uh, just the difference between, and, and that. so one of the things that I had read is that uh, the, a lot of the pheromone products were made from animal urine, which automatically is a clit shrinker for me. I'm like, oh, that doesn't, you know. So is is it different, the pheromones you're using, which are, are plant-based versus ones taken from animal pee? <laughs> Yes, they're they're very different. Um, the, those are like very like low quality, low grade pheromones versus what we're using is like the top of the line, very very high quality, pure vegan pheromones. So they really they really don't compare. So this is a vegan friendly product. I love that. So now let's kind of move into talking to people who are going into dating. You have the background of being a relationship, a love coach. Can we offer some advice to someone who's like, it is cold, it is cuffing season. I want to go out and attract somebody. But let's start with some of the common challenges people face kind of getting out there and and starting from scratch. What are some tips that you would give to someone? Um, first of all, I would say go to places to find the type of person that you're looking for. So let's say like, if you're into working out, go to the gym. If you, you know, want to meet a doctor, for example, like volunteer at a hospital, like go to specific places to find the type of person you're looking for. If you're looking for someone 
who's, you know, in finance or business, and then you're just going out to clubs, it's harder to find that person. Whereas, you know, if you go to specific events where you can find that person, it makes it a lot easier. Um, That's my first tip. I would say um, confidence is key and like knowing your worth. Um, I think you touched on it earlier that you're always focused about like, am I, you know, do I look right? Do I like worried about yourself and how you're acting and how you're behaving, but you're looking for your life partner, you know? So this is there, they should be on their best behavior. It's not about you and what, you know, how you are. It's what do you want? What are you looking for? So just being confident and knowing your value and knowing that you deserve the best because, you know, nobody's going to be attracted to someone who's not even confident in themselves, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I love, I love that mind frame switch in the dating world. Two things I want to come back to that you just talked about. First of all, you, and nowhere did you mention dating apps. And I think people are burnt out on dating apps. So then the first question people always bring up is, well, how do I, how do I meet people where am I going to meet people well you have to leave your house to start and I love the idea of choosing where to go to meet people based on the kind of person you want to meet clubs are fun and everything and sure you might bump into someone sexy but you really don't you know you don't know who you're going to meet there and people are mostly going there just to have fun maybe hook up you know Uh, So really choosing your extracurricular activities or if you're going to volunteer or if you, you know, whatever it is based on the kind of person that you want to date. And then the second thing was confidence is is the new sexy, right? Totally. And knowing your worth. I think one thing that I have learned for myself is like, if I'm not already in a place or a position of knowing my worth, and I have no business being out there trying to attract someone. Totally. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm going to be at a disadvantage, and I'm going to be willing yeah. to downgrade to someone who doesn't, who's not going to treat me the way I want to be treated. So, right. Um, and, it, and then this is where pheromones come into play. If you are not meeting people on dating apps, if you are putting yourself in situations where you can meet the kind of people you want to meet, using pheromones A to attract them, but also also for the self-confidence and self-love piece. So I want to move on to now the sexual confidence piece. One thing I did notice is that you also offer sensual products that include things like uh, massage candles with pheromones in them. Can we talk about how you can use pheromone products? Let's say you don't need to attract someone new. You have your partner you've been with for, I don't know, two, three, five, ten years, but you want to up the game in bed. How can you use pheromones in bed? So going back to the massage candle, um, those are a great way to, you know, create that romantic ambiance with your lover. Um, A lot of times, like couples will just like not do anything special to keep that spark alive and just expect things to happen. But relationships take work. You know, you have to put in the work. You have to put in the effort. You have to create that romantic environment and make it make it special for your lover. So one of our my favorite products is our pheromone massage candle. So what you can do is you can light it, you wait for it to start melting. Um, and then once the oil starts to melt, you can you know pour it all over your body or your partner's body to give each other a massage. Or if you're single, you know, you can light it, take a shower, use it all over your body as your, you know, daily moisturizer and gives you that, you know, soothing, relaxing, you know, feel as well as the pheromones and the fragrance. Um, But going back to using it with your partner, um, again, you can create that romantic um, environment and, um, you know, just, just keep the spark alive. You can also, of course, spray the pheromones on yourself. Um, We have couples kits and things like that. 
but yeah. Do you find that you can use pheromones to actually enhance like the pleasure side of it, meaning that what when you're actually in sort of having sex with your partner and uh, wanting to be more orgasmic, it can help that end of things? Like, do of you course. orgasm better? Yeah, 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 of course. Um, yeah, you can spray it on um, before and it will just help, you know, reignite that spark and help you guys, you know, really connect and feel drawn to each other and attracted to each other and closer to each other. Um, so yeah, definitely. So in a way it is a libido enhancer to a certain extent. Yeah. I mean, I guess in my own experience, because I guess that's what's, you know, my, my contribution to this conversation mm -hmm. is, one of the biggest barriers to especially women, women's libido and getting in the mood and feeling sexy is anxiety and mm -hmm. anxiousness and getting in your head and self-doubt when you're in bed, you know, feeling confident and naked. So it would seem to me that anything that helps lower that kind of barrier is going to help increase your libido. Exactly. Yeah. Could you talk to me a little bit about let's di I'd like to dive into more of the myths around pheromone usage and uh, what are some common myths that you want to dispel and and truths maybe spread for my listeners um one of the things is pheromones can't you know fix a bad attitude or behavior or anything like that um we'll get messages all the time of people like I sprayed it and I went out and it didn't work. And it's like, well, what do you, what did you think was going to happen? Like, what are you expecting is, is going to happen? Um, adjusting the expectations like we spoke about before. So um, that's definitely a myth is that it's like the end all be all that you're going to spray it and like, that's it. Um, you're going to be attracting everyone. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that came up in my research was like, <sighs> the ethics around using pheromones like because you'd be like forcing someone to fall in love with you that is a myth that we need to like dispel right now i thought this was really interesting in the scientific community it's like they yes among animals pheromones work this way but we aren't sure about humans and i was like how 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 would you think that pheromones wouldn't affect humans because to me, I think we all know, we've, we understand, uh, can we, I think we often refer to it as chemistry with other people. You meet someone and for some reason right away, you just feel this like attraction, this animal like draw to some people and other people you're like on paper, you know, you're gorgeous on paper, you pencil out to be like a great match for me, but nothing is happening in my lower loin region. Like my body does not care about you. And I have to really work to get that attraction going. So I guess a good question would be, let's say you meet someone who's good on paper, they're gorgeous. Um, they check all your boxes, but you just aren't feeling it could you use the pheromones to enhance that would it actually fix the problem or what are your thoughts around that i mean you could but if if the chemistry is not there when you're not using the pheromones i wouldn't you know again if this is someone that you're looking for a long-term relationship with and you can't get there on your own without the pheromones then i don't know if i would if I would recommend that. Mm -hmm. um, it made me think of the Love is Blind show where like, you know, I don't know if you've seen it, but oh, yeah. you know, yeah, of course, <laughs> they're behind the closed doors and, and everything, you know, their conversation is growing great, everything's good. And then once they meet in perfect in person, you know, the chemistry wasn't there, the pheromones weren't there. Um, they just couldn't get there with that spark. And yeah, maybe the pheromones would have helped them for, you know, a short period of time. But you know, if long term they couldn't get there, then I don't think it would be. So idea. that that's brings me to the question of if you can, but pheromones aren't based on line of sight, but I assume like their physical barriers will would stop pheromones from crossing. But even if you, if you can't see someone, the the pheromones still work, right? If you, let's say they did love is blind 
and everyone was just wearing a blindfold, but they were sitting in the same room with each other. In those situations, would you start feeling the the tug towards someone? Would that change, you think, how that show worked? Yeah, I think for sure. Like if they were able to be in the same room and just not see each other and have the pheromones, I think definitely they would feel that for sure. I do too. I've definitely been in situations with in places with people where I don't know, I believe I, I just I feel like you can feel that energetic pull. Totally. You can feel the energy completely. So are there different pheromones you should use for different stages of dating or different stages of relationships? I would say we have different pheromones for different times of day, but not like for different periods of time. So like, for example, we have morning glow, which is our daytime fragrance to attract him. So the difference with that one is just the fragrance, which is more like ylang ylang, jasmine, apple blossom. So you spray it in the, in the morning and it gives you that like just boost of energy and like feeling, you know, ready to tackle the day. Whereas, you know, after dark is for, you know, after hours when you're, you know, either cuddled up with your lover or you're going out at night and it's, you know, vanilla, creamy white chocolate. It's very sexy. It's very sensual for the evening time. So we do have different ones for different times of day. So you're mixing the pheromones with different scents or different herbs. And those, the scents and herbs as well have their own aphrodisiac type of effect, correct? Correct. Which, which herbs or scents do you think have or do you know have the strongest effect on attracting someone else um like for me personally i love to wear vanilla like i feel like my husband loves it and he's like super attracted to it and he feels like it's like really sexy and sensual so for me i feel like that's the most attracting but it completely depends on the perfect the person and their preference because some people are completely drawn to more like citrus and grapefruit and then other people are really drawn to like woodsy um, sandalwood fragrances so that's why we have over 30 different fragrances in addition to the pheromones is because you know everybody likes something else yeah, I was gonna say, I don't think fruity is very sexy. That's always been my thing. Like I, I very much like the spicy uh, scents yeah. and stuff like that. Do you think without the pheromones included that scent itself has that attraction boosting ability? Yeah, definitely. And and you'll see a lot of fragrances out there that'll call themselves a pheromone, but there's no actual pheromones inside because of that, what you just mentioned the fragrance is stimulating different feelings. Is there a lot of science or research around which scents have which effects on, on people in the sex and love and attraction world? Um, yeah, there there is. There's been like a lot of research done with different fragrances and, and concentrations and all of that good stuff. So when you create your products, you are doing that based on what the research says and what scents do what in what amount. Yeah, but also for us, our our main component is the pheromones and then the fragrance is just an extra layer on top of it. So the pheromones is what's really going to stimulate that chemical reaction of attraction and arousal. And then we say the fragrance really just complements the mood and the feeling and the outcome. Yeah, I find it interesting because, you know, in my mind, then I was like, well, what if the person, let's say I'm going on a date that and I really want someone to be attracted to me. And then I'm like, what if they don't like the same scent I do? But I think uh, in the end, the scent is an added bonus. But in the end, it's really like the confidence I get and feel is more important than what they like the scent of, because I think... Again, confidence is sexy. It's really, really sexy. And in many, and I'm talking about, you know, nice confidence. I'm not talking about douchebaggy, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Dudes, yeah. like guys who are, are listening to this, this podcast right now, do not do the douchebag. Confidence is not sexy. Like, 
well-earned sexy confidence is sexy. Uh, it is sort of, I think, really the, the hack in the dating world, right? Is going into date confident is going to give you an edge. Now, if the pheromones you have on also get them turned on and make them, you know, more than great. Now you've got a double edge, right? If the scent is, you know, not their thing, my guess is the confidence plus the pheromones would trump like that's not their favorite scent. Totally. Yeah. And by the way, we do also have unscented. If you just want the pheromones with no fragrance, if you want to wear it with your own perfume or if you're sensitive to fragrances, we have that option as well. Oh, that's and also cool. There- that's yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, I like that. It, it is really cool. It's And sometimes I'll like layer it with my own perfume. Usually I'll wear ours, but sometimes if I'll have a different perfume, I'll just layer it on top. Um, and also I was going to say it's not too overpowering. I know you said you were nervous about like them liking the scent. Um, for the pheromones, you just want to spray one to two sprays in your chest area where your sweat glands are, um, because that's where the pheromones are best activated. So it's not, I mean, you can spray it in other places for the fragrance, but you don't need a lot. You just need one or two sprays. So it's not going to be like you walk into the room and it's like heavy and overpowering. I love the scents. Again, I love, I'm very affected by scents. But they aren't overwhelming. And even when I have accidentally misaimed it and which... I don't know, it's apparently a thing that happens to me a lot. And I've oversprayed very quickly. It dis, uh, dissipates to a place where I don't, you know, smell like a perfume factory as I walk around. <laughs> See, I love that. I, But some people are so sensitive to scents. So I love that you have the option of just the pheromone, which doesn't, you, you said it doesn't have a scent, the pheromone. No, the pheromones themselves are unscented. So that's why we add different fragrances to them. I feel like for listeners, whether you are wanting to attract someone or just feel better in your own life, like, so, you know, I've been really working on my own uh, self-love routine. I have a a weekly podcast episode that comes out that's Masturbation Monday that's really just all about building my own self-love practice and my own confidence and feeling good about and loving on myself. I feel like pheromones, at least I clearly am using it in that role with myself, right? To feel confident and feel good about myself. And it seems like in the role of finding love, in the role of bettering your life and feeling sexier and drawing the people you want to you. And you even mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, this could be friendships. This could be work relationships. Using pheromones can do help you out with all of that. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. And honestly, that's most of the testimonials that we get from people. Like I was saying earlier, like People will use it when if they're in college and they're trying to make new friends, they'll use it for, you know, social anxiety, um, really anything. Like I said, dancers, bartenders, waitresses, people who work in hotels, hospitality, um, meetings, trade shows, you know, really anything that you need, either that boost of confidence or you know, you just want people to feel good being around you. Right. And this is all science backed, correct? Yes. And I will be on my own going through and reviewing these and telling listeners and readers on sheexplorerslife.com about the different products, which ones I use and and how they've worked for me. So stay tuned for that, guys. Scroll down. Uh, there's always a link to my e-newsletter that you can sign up for so that you can receive my reviews and and more information. But before we go, do you have things that you would like to share with my listeners that we may have not hit on uh, about using pheromones in their in their love life, in their sex life, in just their life in general? Any last things you want to leave them with? Tips, tricks, anything like that? Um, I think we touched on pretty much everything. But my biggest tip is just to feel confident, feel sexy and know that you are worth it. 
and that you are the star. <laughs> you are the I mean, I am the star for sure. <laughs> are the star. It's not about other people that you're going out to look for to attract. It's about you and what you're giving out and what you're the energy that you're bringing to the world. So that's my biggest tip. I love that. I love that it pointing out that it's not about other people. I think we get hung up in that. It's that it's about the other person. It really is about you and how you feel about yourself. And the rest will fall into place. And you can give yourself an edge by, you know, wearing some pheromones to you pull people towards you a little bit more. Yes. Can you let listeners know where they can find out more about you, more about Eye of Love, and about attracting people with pheromones? Um, yeah, you can find Eye of Love at www.eyeoflove.com, spelled like your I-E-Y-E of love.com. Um, we also have an Instagram and a TikTok and Facebook, and it's all just at I of Love. Um, and then me personally, um, I'm on Instagram, just Jax, J-A-X, and then Rubinoff, R-U-B-I-N-O-F-F. Uh, check it out, listeners. Uh, give it a try and report back to me. I w- want to know what happens when you use pheromones. Do you? How do you feel about yourself? How did it work in the dating world if you're dating? Or if you currently have a partner, did it a- affect how you felt with them or how they felt about you? And remember, this will not make up for any personality issues you've got going on. You got to fix those things. And um, I've got a lot of content. Scroll back. I've got plenty of advice in past episodes on how to be great in bed. So thank you so much for joining me today, Jackie. All right, guys, until next time, I will see you in the locker room. Cheers. Bring loop.